John. John. Yeah. Okay. So starting with the agenda. Does anybody have changes, additions, anything they want to do with the agenda? Um, I, uh, I I just want to have, I just have a, oh, I'll just put it in the report, council report. Okay. Um, meeting guidelines, I just um, would request that we're all civil with one another. And we need a timekeeper. I can do that if you like. Okay, great. So next up are next up are the um, minutes from July tenth. Thank you, Al. I personally didn't have any changes. Does anybody have any changes? Minutes. No. Okay. I'm going to need guidance on the parliamentary procedure aspect of this. So I move we accept the minutes. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Great. I might add that I did resubmit the amended one in the previous month with the the corrections that happened. Forward to, okay. And I also corrected the misspelled <laughs> name. Yeah, my alias. And so you sent those to. So I, 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 you know, there were. There were two. We had the. But then I, I resent them. Okay, I'll look again. Yeah. Okay. Make sure I've done. <clears throat> don't they go to 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 leave? I think that's what I'm supposed to do with them once they're all. Yeah. They're all approved. <clears throat> I forward them on to Judy. It was approved as amended. Okay. So maybe you could just send it on to Judy. Okay. Instead of sending it to me. Sure. I'll send it to you. Great. All right. Um, updates on council actions, Judith? Um, the only thing I have is uh, Pat, you have done two reports. You did the biannual report. Right. And then you did the report from the um, police working group on advisory boards, right. and, you know, police advisory boards. And I think on review boards. And review boards, yeah. Those are really separate, yeah. so we have to use them to be careful with them. I think we, advisory is yes. really different from a review board. Okay. So and I are. think it's really going to help our discussions if we could begin to make that distinction consistent. I thought it had both. No. I, mean, I might have referenced in my reporting that the, the revised report, which is in this okay. packet, is just the Okay, okay. Um, so I talked with um, Brian about it, and he suggested that both of those reports come to the September meeting. And I had, maybe I had here, the, the second meeting in September. I think I had suggested that you do the one. Hey, Steve. Yay. That would be which is the third, no, the third Monday. 17. Yes. It's about, I think, wait, is that? When is Labor Day? It's the first one. Yeah, Labor Day is the third. So, yes. Yeah. So, 17. Um, so, um, which one am I? Um, he suggested, he said, and I guess I I had it before it was, I think it wasn't the most recent report that I had sent to him. And uh, he thought, anyway, that it did provide some context for thinking of a job project as the commission. It's different than the commission. But um, he suggested we do both reports at the second meeting. Is it both of them? Yes. Well, the biannual, and because I had we had talked about giving the one on the first Monday, the first meeting, and um, he asked that they both be given the second meeting. Does anyone else want to give a biannual on the other? Whatever. Yeah, I don't okay. care. Either. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Um, I think. 
Uh, I'm just trying to think. If there, I think that's all I have to report on. Council hasn't made any actions. Can I pass this on to you? Because you were going to chair the meeting. <laughs> oh. You're looking at me like I'm nutty. I can continue <laughs> to chair it. But <laughs> my shots are going late. Yeah, sorry about that. No. <clears throat> um, all right. Uh, we're, we just did updates on council action, so we're up to citizen concerns. All right. <clears throat> yeah, if everybody is okay with this, I'm sure you were doing just fine, but I will gladly take over uh, if need be. So, all right. Um, are we concluded with the council? Do you have anything else to add to that? Okay. All right, well then let's move on. Two citizens' concerns. Once again, I'd like to remind people, three minutes. Uh, first speaker. I'm going to just move this because it needs some people to hang on to. There we go. And just first announce your name. Can you just give me 30 seconds for my time and You're getting organized. Is that a yes? Yeah. Can you give me 30 seconds before my time and Yes. Oh, I'll let you know. Yes. Sure. Yep, yep, yep. Thanks. So, all right. Thanks so much for letting me speak here. Um, as you know, I'm quite passionate about the idea of a civilian review board. I'm grateful that that's on the agenda. Um, I just really wanted to ask you guys, like, what you know, we want to do about the the ongoing um, issue of you know, police may not want to be uh, have any oversight at all, and and how will we approach that if that's the case? I mean, a mayor's court recommendation originally we we were saying. Um, we're going to send all the cases that are legally can, and some people say maybe not, maybe can, but then we, we took it to the, the um, council and the police said no. So, you know, I think a civilian review board, there could be a similar process like that. Um, you know, I have my strong concerns that you know, I've been sharing here publicly about having been raped by somebody who was working for the, the, the police as an informant, and there were rumors spread. Uh, that he was not an informant. I want you guys to know he was an informant and I believe that this um, rumor that he was not an informant was specifically spread in order by the police, I know that to be the case, but specifically with the intention to avoid any accountability for what they had done. In my case and because I'm advocating for police reform, um, anything done in the future that would prevent what happened to me happening again. And I just want to really underline this point that what I'm talking about here is not just Black Lives Matter, it's not just, you know, poor, you know for poor people being treated equally as rich people in, in the community by the police. In my particular case, and, you know, a review board would, would potentially do, this, do something for this, it's, we're talking about the safety of children. We're talking about the safety of children from being sexually abused in this community. Now, if they chose to take somebody on and put children's, uh, the concerns of you know, children's safety being raped below other concerns, I, I have no doubt it's you know, similar uh, decisions are being made when it comes to sexual violence. And how are we going to have a structure of accountability that would that would address this? How are we going to relate to the police in a way that is actually using the authority that we have as a civilian government to implement legal restrictions? We're not talking just about like changing the culture. I mean, it's great to do you know trainings and try and make an impact on the culture, but we have the the ability to actually make a difference in like the legislation. Oops. 
discussions or anything that I would like before the next person mm -hmm. begins to speak? Okay. You, you don't have to answer, but I did pose that as a question to the board if anyone wants to respond to what we could do to make sure that, you know, that sort of pushback doesn't happen again where the police are setting, spreading rumors about this incident. I'm sharing more. Uh, I just like, I, I'm really, uh, no, really understanding exactly what all this is about. I just figure it's a time to say something if I have a chance. And I have said this in in letters to the editor several times that I think since we are the taxpayers and we pay these people to protect us and we give them great authority to do that. And with um, Power can come corruption, and there's not, I don't think that there, ha I think with that kind of power there has to also be accountability. And I don't see uh, very much reported in our newspaper, and I think we as citizens have a right to know what all the, that the police department is doing. The, what is in the Yellow Springs news is ridiculous. That's all that we, if that's all they do, why do we have so many officers? You know? And but I would really also very much think that they should have to make an accountability of how they, uh, how they're, how they are organized. Uh, how do they award promotions? Uh, and if there isn't any accountability of, of how that is done. And I think that that could be a crux of a lot of the problem because I think jealousies and things are interdepartmental and we don't know about it and it causes hard feelings and um, that it's just, it's not right. We should know about that and they should have to be accountable for who is promoted because the promotions are represent power and more money. That's all I got to say now. Thank you. All right, any other speakers? William Tone, T O L O E, and uh, I don't want to take up anybody's too much time, uh, but basically I just want to express my concern uh, and show support of the Justice System Task Force and also Sean Talucky with what he's trying to get started for police accountability and because uh, uh, police corruption is a, is a big concern of mine, uh, having been directly affected by it. So, uh, thank you. Thank you. Any other? Mm -hmm. Any other citizen concerns? Any discussion by the task force or anything said? <clears throat> We're moving on to ongoing business. Um, Can I just say one thing? Uh, have we switched something around? No, 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 no. I, d I just want to say, in terms of the Civilian Review Board, the um, report uh, that Pat has written is going to be brought to council second meeting as a As a recommendation, or well, that's a question. Of okay. Yeah, so we can talk and we get to that and ask people what was it a recommendation or was it just right. something that should be at least brought to the table? Right. Yeah, talk about it. And when's that meeting? Which meeting? It's the second. This is 17th. 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 September. 
Oh, so, okay. I mean, this, this group in a past meeting, you know, talked about some of the aspects of a review board that seemed, you know, the most feasible as a starting point. Right. So, I, I don't see it. I mean, I, I think I would, I would want to talk about that a little bit. Probably what do we talk about here? We get to that it's on the agenda. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, I mean, I don't mean to talk about it tonight, but when it comes, the question was, is that going to council as a recommendation or just as a report? Right. And I think mm, a report plus discussion. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Not just be like, oh, thanks for the report. We're done. <laughs> anyway, okay. Yeah, we can talk about it. Yeah, let's talk about it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I guess I should know. Has anything been changed uh, or asked to be moved? All right. <coughs> Revised surveillance ordinance. So, can I? Correct, right. So we, yeah. Yeah. Please. I, I, wasn't, sure. I wasn't sure about process of uh, it looked to me as though everything that needs to be done to this by this group has been done to this and that it's ready to move ahead but I wasn't sure whether there was some last action or blessing or who or who was responsible for taking it on to council. Does that make sense? So, so I just put it on here for that reason. I yeah. think we passed. We did pass. We did pass it. And we, we did. So uh, Ellis made some minor changes relative to the input of staff, um, which is here for you to see. It's going to come up at the meeting on Monday. Um, Ellis will be doing the primary, and it's going to be great if you could come. Well, one if you're able to. Uh, and did somebody else work with your committee on it? Um, yeah. Bill. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, it is going to be discussed. And uh, council, well, I should say the agenda planning people asked that, just so people aren't surprised, um, that um, the, I got this request that, um, you know, we just make the proposal but not make it an ordinance. And so I let, uh, I let the agenda planning people know, you know, I'll include what Ellis had, and what you guys, what your little committee had included, the ACLU report, the little introductory comments by Ellis will be included, but I let them know the ordinance was actually the recommendation, what would be recommended by the committee. Um, and so, anyway, just to let you know that. Um, and I did check back with staff again to make sure I sent them the, you know, for little changes. Um, and they basically said this is a good place to start having a discussion at council. So. The underlying that portion is where the changes, is that correct? Oh, on this. Uh, I don't know. Yes, I believe so. Yep. But well, we discussed the changes and then we voted on. Yeah. And that was just the adapted one. Yes. The emergency yes. clause. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. I don't. Not that no. other than I think coming to be part of the discussion. You're able to. Okay. Great. All right. Done. <laughs> <coughs> A review proposed mayor's court recommendation number two. And who? I had an email from Dave that said he was out of town and yeah. Laura, Laura was going to present. Awesome. I don't think we coordinated. Oh. <laughs> oh, you didn't know you were present. Because here I'm texting saying, I am um, a little bit late, Dave. Um, <laughs> so um, I think recommendation number two is premised on, we've t we talked about this long time ago, and 
the idea of having a restorative justice program and a diversion program where you divert people before either conviction or even if they get convicted, you, you divert them for um, some kind of community service or um, restorative justice circle or something that results in a better form of justice than you get in the usual run-of-the-mill course of, of what we do here in the United States. So um, to do that, it is premised on the belief that you need somebody who is the legal advisor to the police department who presents a state case. Normally that person is called this nasty word called prosecutor. Call them assistant solicitor if you want, it doesn't matter. They're the one, who's the one who has the power to amend charges, to recommend certain defendants based on policy for diversion or restorative justice. That's not, norm, that's not a um, judicial officer um, task, it's not a staff task, it's a legal task. And so that's why you have to have that person to run that program. Um, I don't think it would take a whole lot of hours. Um, I can't honestly, I didn't have a chance. I was working all day today. I didn't have a chance to review the proposal. I forget what we thought, maybe. Probably something like five to ten hours a week. Yeah, it's 25 my hours a month. Yeah, something like it. Because when you run a diversion program, it's a lot of compliance. So did they show up? Did they do what they were going to say? If they didn't do, you have to make a decision. You have to look at look at the cases when they come in, who's eligible, who isn't. Or can you amend the charges? Can you review the charges? And then when that person presents the state's case, I mean, right now, you basically have the police presenting the state's case, which is not um, really the best situation. So, and, and if you ask police officers, they'll say they're not that comfortable with it either. Um, so. so that's the recommendation, is to do a restorative justice diversion program, which Fairborn Municipal Court, uh, almost every municipal court has some kind of diversion program, which is kind of unusual, I think, we don't. Um, and we can do a little different variation of it because of the interest in this community and restorative justice. So that's the recommendation. It would require an expenditure, it would require an employee. However, part of this is, and this is part of the idea that we fully utilize Mayor's Court by having our officers charge everything in the Mayor's Court that can come into Mayor's Court, which is still being discussed, by the way, is that, you know, that there's revenue that's going out of the village because of that. So if that revenue came back, you certainly could afford to do this, I believe. So, questions? Would we also plan to involve the uh, social worker with that? Yeah, you absolutely can, yeah, that? for sure, depending on that person's, um, you know, comfort level with working with different, you know, if they, yeah, they certainly well, can. <laughs> well, so, you know, we know that there are certain individuals here who I see their names coming up again and again in the court record, and for stuff that's probably mental health related, and so that person needs to be cooked up with mental health, sir. And I know she's trying to do that. And it just what else is out there for that person because they're a frequent offender. And it's really to get that behavior stopped, you need to go to the root cause of the problem, which is something other than that they're a, a bad person or a mean person. It's something else. Yeah, for sure. That was my question. Go ahead. <laughs> so one question I have was how this assistant solicitor interfaces with the mayor. Uh, with the name well, of the so there would, and this is where this interfaces with council and with this group is you come up with a policy about well, you know, who do we want to divert? A lot of times it's going to be first-time offenders of almost every kind. It's going to be neighbor disputes where uh, high level where violence isn't involved. And these are all down in misdemeanor world. I mean, felonies mm -hmm. are not. You know, this. So neighbor disputes are good ones for um, doing some sort of mediation or restorative justice. Um, so that, those would be kind of give me ones, but there would have to be a policy. So in terms of the mayor, the um, the mayor is the judicial officer in Yellow Springs. The mayor is the judge of the mayor's court. So they're the judicial officers. So the assistant solicitor would present the cases that need to be presented. Not all of them. Some, so if you divert half of them, let's say that on your any particular week, 
Um, out of the 10 cases, five of them are first time uh, traffic offenders, for example. Those may all be diverted, for example. They may never come onto the mayor's docket. If you have a policy that you're going to divert first time <coughs> speeders or something, make them go take a safe driving course or whatever, then, then uh, those may never come in front of the judge. And so you're putting people in a diversion program before they've been found? I think that will be something to explore, yeah. They end up saying, you know, they make some kind of admission or cooperation, and I would say, if you do this, this, we'll dismiss your case. Yeah. And that's kind of what the judge does, what, you know, for example, on driving under suspension, that's sort of what the judge does now, is you go, go get right with BMV, go get your license restored, and come back and dismiss the case. Uh, when did, I'm sorry. I was asking if anyone else had oh, a question. Yeah. Oh. Um, the policies regarding who you want to divert, when is that policy developed? I mean, who, when you, I, who you, you want know, to divert, yeah. um, what are the, you know, something we've talked about is enforcement mm -hmm. priorities. Um, yeah. There's lots of models. And then who is hiring this person in your mind? Uh, uh, I think it's a council hire, I think because the council hires the solicitor and, and I think any assistant solicitor. Actually, I know that because I think in your, I think your um, ordinances right now, I think it says, I think it says there's a spot for assistant solicitor. It's a reserved ordinance, like it's already in there really. But I think council would do that hiring because they have the power to hire the solicitor. I mean, you could maybe also, that's a big question with solicitors, could you delegate data to the solicitor? I don't, I don't know, but I think that would be up to you. Yeah, whether, and you I think you decide whether to make it an hourly or a salaried employee or contract or whatever you want to do. Um, when I look at this, Lauren, and I support this idea that I'm trying to support it, but I think that's the piece that the council and maybe other people will react to most strongly. And I think that we heard something of the mayor's office already that they are working on diversion and restorative justice. That's so great. the sense that, the time, well, wait a minute, don't get defensive yet. I mean, I, I agree that it should be done within the legal framework and it should be presented by the budget attorney. But I, I'm thinking in terms of how we're communicating to the council. I mean, do we want to say, is the, is the recommendation really to hire in a part-time attorney? Is that the, that's the most important part of the recommendation. And the other, and because that person can then do these things. Because the way we've had it written here, it's more like we should do these things, and by the way, we'll have to have a part-time attorney. I mean, I, I just but feel I mean, there's a little bit of a, that needs to happen in terms of really communicating clearly with people. And as a point of information, I shared with two, two people anyway, um, the ACLU of Ohio today came out very strongly against Mayor's Court because we do not have any reasons. Yeah, because they're not, they're, they're usually often not running a way that is um, well, protect, as protective as it needs to be of defendants' well, rights. Well, and they point out that the, if the person's not an attorney, they're getting six hours of training. Right. Well, that's a, I could I could talk forever about why that's a problem, but yeah, it is, so it's a tradition in Ohio and Louisiana to have these measures that allow non-lawyers to be judges of other people when they don't really have any legal training, I mean, very I little. Mayor's courts have been under target from the Ohio Supreme Court for years. Now you have ACLU jumping on a campaign. We really have to think about this, having a mayor's court that does not have you know, the appropriate legal representation. So I, I think it's important. I just think the, the way we put it out here, well, we need these programs, and then, by the way, we have to hunger in. It's really the opposite issue. Well, we you would think so, things. except you can't have one without the other. You, you know, you cannot. The only person in our system who has the power to divert defendants is the prosecutor. So if you want to divert people or have alter alternatives to straight out go to court, either plead guilty or go to trial, this is what you need, this is what you do. Because the mayor is, is a judge, and the judge is not supposed to get involved in the details of somebody's case prior to 
It's supposed to come to the judge uh, without any knowledge of what happened, just they're hearing it in the court <coughs> setting. That's where the judge gets to hear about it. It's not behind the scenes with the officers going in the behind the door telling them about it beforehand or any such thing. And this is this is how this is because that judge they're, and they're also governed by the judicial ethics of Ohio, which means that to be fair and impartial. Again, that means not getting involved pre pre trial with the case. Well, I don't need convincing, and I don't know if anybody else needs convincing. But I'm I, talking about the opposite. What's most important in this? I think John had this in that point. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, basically, you know, I agree with Pat. Um, I mean, as Ellis said, when, when you presented uh, this same recommendation at the, uh, at the May meeting, you know, I mean, this is a recommendation to create a prosecutor's office. And, you know, I think that you should just have that in the recommendation title, that that should be really foregrounded. If, if, um, you know, I support that recommendation. And um, I feel like I agree, saying that, that it's to establish a diversion and restorative justice program. Um, will make it unclear, I think, to most people uh, what the recommendation uh, mostly does. Uh, I mean, of course, a prosecutor's office can run a diversion and restorative justice program, but possibly even more importantly, uh, well, I guess, to, but it can do that because it has control over um, prosecutorial discretion. Mm -hmm. And the exercise of prosecutorial discretion, the ability for them to, to set prosecutorial priorities, um, yeah. It allows them also to, to drop charges, to um, interface with the police department to say you should focus more on these things rather than these things. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think that's obviously the, the, the power that ought to be foregrounded so people can under, understand what the recommendation is doing. Um, and then uh, I guess I'd also like to, to draw people's attention to um, on the second page, um, the first paragraph. Uh, the development of the DRJ program will be done in conjunction with stakeholders, staff, JSTF, and the community, and would involve discussions about law enforcement policies and priorities regarding charging and enforcement. Um, I would say that that's. What, where are you at? I'm sorry. Um, it's page two. Oh, okay. Yeah, at it's the top the here. second oh, to the last yeah, sentence yeah, yeah. in that first gotcha, paragraph. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, I mean, that's really sort of the crucial aspect because that's where the details of what the prosecutorial priorities, policies, and priorities will be um, ends up getting hammered out. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if we need more. It would be useful to have more detail there. I, I just wanted to draw everyone's attention to it. I feel like that's where the main action of like, what are we doing will we'll have to. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I'll give up the floor. Um, two things. I know that some citations that come from, can come from mayor's court if we have a prosecutor, so I think it would be good to say what they are. I'd like you to say what they are as soon as I get done, done talking, because I know there's some things that uh, we can't keep here without a prosecutor, or at least that's the feeling. Uh, I'm not, uh, and then um, I mean, some of the more serious misdemeanors, I think. And then um, we can keep them here maybe, but don't. Um, and then in terms of, you know, I think it should spell out, you know, this will be a higher council and that, and I think it would be good for JSTF to make a recommendation about the enforcement priorities, um, you know, as a part of this higher, you know, if, if we're recommending this higher, that we're, that we're talking about that kind of content. Um, well, and because yeah. those are the, the community values, and that's you know as a this is a place where you know it's a public meeting, a public discourse. Of course, it'll happen at council as well. Um, but I think we could make a recommendation. It might not be what the final version is, but it seems to me like you know that's where community values goes. And I think it would be good. If I would be for our committee doing that. But what citations? What citations don't come to mayor's court because they're more serious than 
there would be more right. level. Right, so yeah, it's not because you don't have a prosecutor, it's just because of the Ohio Revised Code. So for example, domestic violence okay. can't come to mayor's court. It's got to go to muni court. It doesn't but, matter if you have a prosecutor or not. And I think the idea behind that is that they're funneling all the domestic violence victim services through yeah, the, down there. So, But aren't there some things that right now mayor's not comfortable with coming to mayor's court, maybe more serious misdemeanors? Well, that's what this August 22nd meeting's about, is what, you know, is not sure what, what those are. That's, that's yeah, we're still working on, and finally, just because of everybody's schedules, trying to get a meeting about um, charging discretion of officers, and, you know, I mean, uh, given, that, again, the taxpayers are paying for this mayor's court, why should anything be going to muni court if that isn't required by law? So what make the case, you know, what's, what would be the reason to send anything to muni court? And that's what we still need to work out, and, and we're hearing from the chief and, and, and the mayor, maybe some of that is her discomfort handling something. Yeah, I think that's Maybe, um, so I don't know the answer to that yet. Oh. But well, I mean, I like the statement of, to establish an operative diversion and restore the justice program in mayor's court. That, that is the thrust of it. Now, you, you talk down here about consequences of doing that, and that involves hiring someone. And so, I, uh, to me, that's the way it should. And, and we, we get in trouble when we pre present things to council and we get really specific because. Then the police chief, uh, the mayor don't, don't don't like it, and they say, you know, well, give me six months, and and also they think the, the the committee should recommend that this happen, and let let them work out some of the, the details of how that's going to happen, because that's where we get in trouble when we put all these specifics on the objective of specifics and no, nothing gets done. Yeah. Uh, so actually. I'm sorry, go ahead. Sorry, we're um, So I have two points and one of them Al just made. Um, I, I think this is clear that there's a problem statement and the a solution, a solution that we're proposing for the problem statement is this role. So I think it'd be good to check with Judy about whether or not there is a reserved place in the ordinance for this listed already. Because if that placeholder already exists, that makes things quite simple. Um, I think the other point that, and I agree, I think it should be proposed. Um, the other, you know, I've been working on a finance subcommittee, so I've like, been thinking about um, the financial implications of this sort of proposal for a while. And I think in addition to the revenue offset, that's gained by more cases coming to um, the mayor's court. Um, another um, very positive thing is that right now the officers, um, because we don't have a magistrate, the officers have to go to um, mayor's court and they're all in overtime. And so we're paying over. You saying mayor's court or free county? Mayor's court. So we're paying overtime for police officers to sit in mayor's court. And I think it would be, I would be glad to work with the finance subcommittee to take a little look at what the offset of that would be if just alone knocking off that um, overtime. That's another thing that could help to cover the cost of this person off. Okay, so. I, I really like this idea. Um, I, I think Al expressed, I have concerns that council is going to look at this and just go, eh, um, for the reasons that you described. And one of the things I hear is this suggests a diversion program. Mayor's court says they're already doing something about diversion. Our social worker is working with diversion, so then we have convoluted overlap and so forth. And I wonder about um, presenting this as perhaps a year-long pilot program 
and whether that would help it uh, make it more amenable to council. And that pilot program would give an opportunity for those overlaps to be worked out, perhaps. Just an idea. Can I, can I ask on what basis you think that council is going to push back against us? I would say um, what our experience so far has been. <laughs> with council's response to the things that we brought to them. Yes. Um, I, I'm fine with, I think it is a strong statement, you know, we need this, we want this. But I don't think, I think there needs to be something more upfront about this is so important to us and it cannot be done without the staff person. I mean, I don't think you want it to go into, in the next section we'll talk about it. Mm -hmm. It just is too far down in the, if you, you don't, don't bring it up and I want to bring it up. I think it should be, I mean, I think it would be good to have it be the main recommendation, but, if, but the other is, is very, you know, really persuasive. We want, for all these good reasons, a diversion and restorative justice program. But then it has to pretty quickly say, and this requires. Yeah. yeah. Can't happen. Well, just how, in, how possible or possible is the concept of doing a, a year policy making? Is that, can you say this is policy for a year? It ends and we've been looking to it well, again. We say we want a pilot, pro or a a pilot program. So I mean, would it be policy would just be done? Council has done, done that historically where we've hired someone and then they aren't, usually they're not a staff member initially. Gotcha. So usually it's usually they do it. And you know, then if, it, if it's an ongoing, they become, they come onto the council, so they're hired kind of as a I just consultant. I kind of feel like that contract. does, that will ease some of the concepts <laughs> of being afraid to take on something um, as a permanent. Council's been open to the idea that we need a prosecutor. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm wondering, given the ACLU's now taking on this campaign, if you have, is there any sense that if there's a prosecutor, it, it will be because for a long time people have been saying in order for mayor's court to be secure if we need a prosecutor we need somebody who's actually a legal person i think this is a the aclu campaign is very strong about that so, so there's it's okay if you have a, a well they're not saying it's okay they say mayor's they're courts are bad they should be should disappear but one of the main reasons they're saying it's so bad is because that there's no legal yeah, yeah so I think there is an openness. I don't, I don't think yeah, right. I feel like there's loopholes yeah. or whatever they're yeah. saying. Or they, they really just want to get rid of people who are those traps that would been set. Yeah, they have. Really bad name, yeah. They're encouraging anybody who's ever gone to Mayor's Court with the traffic uh, ticket to contact them. Hmm. Wow. You know, I mean, they're really, yeah, they're really on it. They're really on killing Mayor's Court. So, wow. <laughs> But the good thing about Mayor's Court, really, I mean, I think they can be very useful because so much, sure. no, local right. people yeah. can, so it gives us more control. Gives more control. I'll go back to the case of, you know, uh, a, a person who got charged in this community with criminal damaging, who had basically a clean criminal record, an older person, a senior citizen, and that officer sent that case, an M3, down to Xenia. Ron Lewis wouldn't dismiss it and let it be refiled here, wouldn't send it back here. I had to do the fight down there, and only when the village solicitor, I convinced him that the case should be dismissed, because the village was the victim. So if your victim says, okay, then it can happen. Did that case against a senior citizen with no record and no criminal intent get dropped? I mean, it took 13 hours and, and really was pretty harrowing for everyone involved because it could easily have not turned out that way. And had it been here in Mayor's Court and there had been a diversion program, or a prosecutor, a prosecutor, I think, would have, a, a local prosecutor would have looked at that and dismissed it anyway. So, but yeah, it took, well, in Mary Ann's case, it took, you know, finally got the right prod. That should have been here in Mayor's Court too, if anywhere. Yeah. Not charged at all. Mary. So um, I like the recommendation they're making, maybe just add a few sentences up to the top that just clarify that, acknowledge that there's been conversation in the mayor's team about um, diversion, but the diversion programs need 
a person in this role that diversion cannot be managed by the mayor and just state that and then also say that there is not duplication with the role of our um, community mm -hmm. social worker yeah. but that yeah. instead it's complementary but that person cannot really negotiate a diversion either nor can the police so I just put that right up there yeah, in the top yeah. you know that. My only question then is this is I know this is still draft, but where when are we gonna talk about this again next month for the next decision that's gonna so John remind me now goes gets published in the paper. No. Well I feel like Oh what I mean it depends on how you hear what people are saying. I, I was hearing a, a motion. I was hearing a motion to refer back to the committee. Um, and I was so Before it goes excited to make such a motion myself. So, no. Just to make that little change, I mean, I can, you can, can we do it. that and post it? Yeah. So that we could. Uh, so, the, so the intention of the noticing comment process was always to be sort of a dependent step, not like an integral step of the, the development of a, uh, of a recommendation. So, like, as long as we feel like it's still actively being developed, which it, so if you have, even if we feel like it's on the glossy side rather than on the substantive yeah. side, um, I mean, especially because I mean, if you if you change, I mean, if everybody just wants to make their right here in this meeting, you're free. no, 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 don't do that. Okay, so yeah, so like the reason that it needs to get rewritten is that like when you post the notice and comment, the the post for notice and comment, you want it to say. This is, you know, JSTF is considering recommending the creation of a local prosecutor's office rather than JSTF is, is, is considering, you know, this, this resolution to create a diversion and restorative justice program so that the community understands what recommendation we're actually developing. Um, the, even though the effect of the recommendation would be extremely similar, the, all of the words would be in different order and you would use different words, you would explain that. You know, the prosecutor's job is to, you know, seek justice, and they also have, um, and then it's also part of their job to help, you know, serve victims, make sure that they're connected to services, even if we can't provide all the services here. Um, the, basically I'm all of lost. the, all of the words would be different. You Your, would what? what you were trying to accomplish, you would still be able to accomplish, but I think that, and once again, the committee can disagree with me, but I think that, uh, that it needs to be reframed as a recommendation to create a local prosecutor's office rather than a recommendation to create the diversion of the sort of justice program. Why, when that's not what she's attempting to do, she wants to create this, and the because of that, wanting to create that, we need a prosecutor. Why say we want to create a prosecutor's office just so that restorative justice can kind of happen? Clearly, we want the opposite to happen. It just what? sounds like you're purposely rewording it to make it sound like a way harder sell to the community as well as to the council. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the they, goal they, really they, is to create they restorative it. justice. No, no, they they reworded it from their desire to create a prosecutor's office to this because they thought it would be an easier sell. But like, from the perspective of folks, well, that's the once again, if you're at a meeting, Alice Jacobs explained, w was rather offended by this framing of it, feeling like we've discussed creating a prosecutor's office, like this is what you're attempting to accomplish. It was, it was an aspect of the mayor's court election, right? People took various positions on it. This recommendation effectively accomplishes that aim, but backgrounds the fact that that's what it's seeking to do so significantly that if you don't already understand the law, or our attend every JSTF meeting, you wouldn't understand that that was what JSTF was trying to do. I mean, that's like evidently the case. Like that's almost the purpose of, of its rewarding was simply to hide the ball. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think it makes sense to, okay. The question is, are we, are we willing to make a recommendation without having the so that's the question, right? Um, do we have a general, oh, so no, we have a shared concept, shared 
understanding of what we're so there should here. be a decision there should be a oh, like the recommendation no I think it's just language that goes up front more up front in this yeah. well so I thought we had a shared it. language until John's I did too until John's started. oh yeah yeah I'm sorry so yeah, yeah. Don't I, be let's sorry, just totally dispose just, of my question first. no like let's just dispose of the question of do we think that without understanding exactly can we just informally consider whether or not we we wish to reframe this as a creating a prosecutor's office or not because if the committee disagrees with me then I mean, then like we can kibosh that question and then probably just maybe to notice the comments that's really I, my only concern yeah i mean what i heard everyone said the sense of this meeting is no we don't reframe it however we make it more clear towards the front of the recommendation that this idea of a restorative justice and requires Prosecutor. Right. It's absolutely That's essential. what I think. That's what I heard. Or, or the term solicitor. So, so we should ask. Hmm? We should think of both. Oh, that's okay. Well, I didn't see any of the comments happen, happen, so. This isn't comments happen after the video. Oh, that's yeah. a good question. Oh, yeah, so I'm going to have to What was the question? Just do the citizen comments happen after the vote or before? Um, yeah, once again, three, uh, yeah, what do we have? And just, yeah, thanks for you guys' hard work. I'm sticking with this uh, recommendation about improving the mayor's board and how it works. Um, I just uh, want to know um, if it's a true and accurate representation that basically we put this uh, presentation forward that um, most if or most cases should go to marriage court uh, that can um, and it's basically said that the police basically said no they don't like that and so now we, we have like something that doesn't even require anything about sending more to marriage support. Is that, is that so what that's we're a, that's, that's a separate, separate agenda item and that's, 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 that's not where we so are we're not, even, we're not even talking about that anymore. No, we're, 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 we're still talking about it. We're not okay. talking about it right now. Okay, brilliant. Thanks. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and it will come back. Okay, that, yeah. that's what I was trying to get. All right. Great. Um, and then the second thing was that um, like I just looked at the ACLU website, and I understand that their main concern is uh, how they often are unfair to people of color and poor people. Well, obviously, my understanding of what our intentions are, hopefully our, our good intentions are not a um, way to hell, but, you know, our intention is exactly the opposite, that, you know, if less, go to Xenia. Okay, so my question then is, can we not have some, like more in here that would actually um, maybe be informed by what the ACLU opinion is? That could reach out to them, ask them what what their opinion is, and that could inform our recommendation. Um, that, that would essentially that would help us to ensure maybe have a structure of accountability. Maybe a civilian review board would provide some of that or something. You know that that, that we're making sure some sort of compliance so that the mayor's court is not actually unfair. We're not you know because we can say oh this person seems like a great right. person. They won't. They won't be unfair, but to actually have the compliance. That's a good point. Um, or the concept of reaching out to the ACLU to ask their opinion on our personal mayor's court. Uh, yeah, I'm just right. Well, I, Ellis is very, very tuned into the. That's ACLU. what I assume I mean, as well. He's practically a member of. The right. Other, so I, I think he's. Right, I wouldn't well, worry right. that we were. We're all members. So, <laughs> yeah. 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 so yeah. Just be, talk to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Just make, I'm just going to make one very quick comment. I'm Rebecca Mark. And I think um, that the reason that the ACLU and the people like me are concerned about mayor's court is you basically have a situation where the mayor is, the, and is the, both the judge and the prosecutor. And the, it's my understanding, I'm not a lawyer that the prosecutor's role in a case is to um, seek justice, and that means prosecuting the case if it needs to be prosecuting it, and not prosecuting it if it doesn't need to be prosecuted. And I think that, in my own opinion, Mayor's Court has always had a bad reputation, because I'm from New York City, and to me, Mayor's Court was always like the Andy Griffith show. Well, if that's not what you're doing here, I'm willing to listen to you. And I actually went into the meetings here with the idea that I really hated Bayer's Court, but you have changed my mind that it's a good thing, and I also feel it's very important not to have the judge be the prosecutor. Awesome. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay.
and part of this proposal that Laura just gave, in my opinion, is to make sure that the poor and the, and the disadvantaged get a fairer shape than they're getting uh, with the present system. So it's, and you know, I feel like um, I kind of cut you off abruptly there, so I apologize for being so abrupt. One of the challenges I think that we have going forward with recommendations to council is to be really clear what we're talking about. Are we talking about the cases going to mayor's court? Are we talking about the prosecutor's office? Are we what are we talking about? And they're all so interrelated, but I think when we start to scaffold, you know, are we talking about a citizen advisory? When we start to scaffold between them, I think we confuse people who are not as close to the work as we are. So that's kind of why I reacted the way I did, is to you know, kind of keep these separate and separate strings in their own. No, I asked the question. I, w I was just wanting to get yeah. answer, so thanks for that. And, yeah. and I, what didn't get answered was whether or not there would be any sort of um, thing in the recommendation that would actually ensure compliance to what our intentions are. Uh, whether it's to reach out to the ACLU to help us define that mechanism or, or, or why, just that, you know, is there uh, anything there that we can things do? already <clears throat> in our ordinance that already shows intent, uh, we would just be being done it, basically. I'm talking uh, about, I just, talk I guess about the so next step. What is the yeah, next so step? Yes, that's what I want to know. If there's a motion on the table now. Uh, to go forward it's, with this. Yeah, I just feel like I'm a bit deaf, like, it's, like my words are falling on deaf ears. Like I'm actually saying have a mechanism to analyze whether or not the numbers of, from the mayor's court of, of you know, non-whites, people poor, poor, that sort of thing, some mechanism to actually analyze it before it goes forward. So and this, we're, what we're talking about right now isn't about on. the cases I, I'm sorry, court. we're moving on. Okay. I just, uh, there's this, yeah. so you can, there's a way to find this out. I'm sure there is. Um, but right now, that's not, we're not here to address these questions. We're here to get this done. Is there a motion? Uh, yes, is there a motion? Is there a motion? <laughs> so Krieger is basically I telling me that, that it's, it's, it's um, for the other recommendation would address that potentially. Okay. I move that we accept this with the changes that we've been discussing. Correct, as long as. Right. Not a change in which we're going to start calling it a prosecutor's office. I mean, I'm just saying it's numerous things were brought up, so I want to make sure that we're so really not specific. including, okay, but that it should be brought in closer. And, and there'd be a statement at the front, the one that Lisa described, that um, clearly says the mayor's court cannot really prosecute a diversion, but the social work cannot do Correct. it. They're the only one who can really do it is the prosecutor. Make that statement up front. So it should just say the only person who can do it, not naming the other two people, that's just making it kind of redundant. Just say the only person who can do that is the, I don't think you need to add in, this person can't do it, this person can't do it. Well, there, that, that adds too much to it. If you say this is the only person that can do it, then it automatically excludes the other two people. I, uh, I, I wouldn't mind being that specific. My first question immediately was social worker, why right? yeah. won't they be? Yeah. When she spoke of the hours that we needed to go and visit, and I immediately thought, well, the social worker probably could do that. So the concept that, I don't know, would be way best that only solicitor, prosecutor um, does that. If it's said in there, I wouldn't have needed to ask that. I think is, I don't. I don't think it would be confusing. It was clearer. It'd be clearer to me to know that. That uh, these people can't do it, these people can't do it? Yeah. yeah. Right. And therefore, that's exactly why that's we're recommending yeah, but this you, position. So if you saw it and said only this person can do it, and then only you could do it, and I come in and I try to do it, you can look at it and say, well, no one says that I can do it. I think we're talking about the same thing. I think so. But I'm just, I'm, what I'm saying is, I'm saying what I'm suggesting is the shortening of the statement rather than the lengthening of it. That's all I'm saying. Gotcha. Okay, who is making the changes that we That's or is it probably as we speak? speak. <laughs> or is probably doing it as we speak. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give her a minute. Maybe she'll have a completed version before we move. So I've made a motion. I second that motion. <laughs> 
So is the motion no. for it to go out to comment or to go to council? Oh, no, it goes to comment. No, okay. it just goes to comment. The question is, what is it? <laughs> you know, my, my, my statement was only suggested that a uh, motion is already on the floor. That takes precedence. The motion with the statement at the top is I mean, what I've drafted, the citizens of Yale Springs have expressed an interest in implementing restorative justice and diversion program in the mayor's court in Yale Springs. The implementation of an RJP requires legal counsel with authority to review, present, charge, amend, and exercise prosecutorial discretion to divert cases as, as appropriate per policy. And then I'd like to everything else is saying. That's the first, that's the first, that's where the power is mm -hmm. to divert people is the prosecutor. Yeah. Yeah. And also, and it's not just that. It's types of types of diversion include, like, if something was inappropriately charged, to amend it or dismiss it because it was inappropriate. So that's kind of a type of diversion that isn't happening right now. Yeah. All right. All those call. in favor? Oh, oh there's more discussion. I didn't call for question. There we go. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Okay. I'll send out version two right now. Even. Gotcha. And then from there, you will get out to kind of. Yeah. All right. And, and I just want to confirm it, is this body comfortable with me having some conversations on the finance side to look into some of these cost issues? I think that's a question. I thought that was the yeah, answer. Yeah, because I feel like if it goes to council and we can say, oh, and by the way, we can afford it, <laughs> then that's, this is, that's, an, that's the first thing I would ask. Yeah. Can I suggest something in that? I'm wondering how much time police officers are sitting in Green County because I know they sit over there waiting for cases as well. So that would be a nice little piece of information to know because, uh, because even if it's not putting them into overtime, um, there might be other things that, you know, given you know, the changes that we're wanting to see that they could be using that time to just more, you know, more constructively. Yeah, you're, gonna, you're always going to have an officer in court, you always want to have somebody. Well, I know, but if there are some things that are going over there that then would be staying here, I guess they might not have to that, go there for that. that. Would, it could be less time. That's all. Okay, I thought you were talking about just well, having an officer. I, here. I was focusing on the mayor's court here. Yeah, having an officer. And the here. cost here, yeah. yeah. And and then also the you know looking at the revenue side, and then we might be able to do just kind of an estimation if. More mayor's court cases. If more cases come to the mayor's court, that's probably not time that our officers have to go there to deal with that too. Yeah, yeah, just pretty useful. Mm -hmm. Oh, there. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. well, because they're not staying here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. Hey. Things that we. All right. On to the priority list and the revisits of these priorities. At the last meeting, we all sort of. Gave our three, three best and the outcome is on page 14 here. So could, if I could just say, um, when I went through the notes on agenda for this time, this was put on the agenda. I'm not sure what we wanted to do with it, so I just put it on the agenda. I think we discussed it as perhaps a jumping off point into the recommendation for Justice System Commission, that those two conversations might wrap around each other. Okay, so I can already. So the second one down combines the two mm -hmm. that we, Peace Review Board, as well as the, uh, the commission of the task for the justice system commission yeah. Yeah. So almost like the minutes is anyone seeing something that they feel is misrepresented here? Can I say something? Um, I guess um, Lisa and I had a conversation, and actually Beth was on it too, with uh, Beth 
son, Vaughn Crandall, who is working out in California around police reform stuff. Um, it's, you know, what police officers do during their shifts um, is one of our lowest priorities here. And it's just sort of bothering me because one of the things that we don't, that knowing what police officers are doing during their shifts is part of what, how we're going to know whether the community values and priorities are actually, you know, being expressed through the, the daily activities of the police officers. And so I hate to see it as such a low priority. Right. It's not that necessarily the task force is going to figure this out in the next six, four, however many months we have left in our life. But it just it just seems to me a little problematic to have it the lowest. It's the lowest priority. So Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Do, do they have shift requirements? As, as a chief set of chief uh, chief requirements. I don't know, and I don't know if you do know, but I, I, I don't know because I know when when, yeah. when when I worked, we had shift requirements, yeah. and we were held to those standards. So if you don't have shift requirements, people going to do you know going there going there. There's, there has I'm to be assuming some there are requirements. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, no, my but it's just to do certain places. And, I mean, there's that kind of like thing where it's like it, it's every you know, night you should have to. This, 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 that, like this, that. Yeah, and, and, it, and, it's, and it's written down. It's, it's in the, uh, the manual. Right, I did that while I was doing that. Okay. Because I would have just didn't have to that sort of thing. Yeah. I just, I do know that they have to do certain, yeah, in sure. town they have certain things they have to look over, but I don't know it. Is that something we could request as a public information thing? John, I'm asking you on this one. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Is that something we'd be able to, uh, to Can request? you uh, restate the question? The um, he was talking about requirements, and so basically, I'm assuming shift requirements. Well, yeah, I was responding to a statement they made that about what where it says, uh, where is it at the second from the bottom, what police officers do during their shifts. So, my, my question was, and I don't know, uh -huh. do the officers have in their manual shift requirements or, what they, uh, or expectations of what they should be doing during the shift? And, and if they do, well, that, that answers the question. If they don't, they should. I think that's, that, that's an issue. And then there's a related issue that Vaughn talked to us about, which is um, any that accountability for police departments would include um, data from dispatch or some other data source that says in a data format, here's what office, here are the cases they're working on, here are the calls that are made, you know, it's it's a snapshot of their week. And that data should be available. Uh, now, that's not really what I'm, what I'm saying is, from, it's different. What I'm saying is, if I'm an officer, I'm coming in, he's training me, he's saying, okay, this is what we expect you to get done during your shift. Okay. And that's, that's what I was So I there's got expectation and then there's you know, what really happens. Yeah. Which lends to accountability because yeah. if he says to me that this is what's expected of you and I'm not doing that, I'm held accountable for what I did not do. Yeah. And that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah I'm doing. not saying we should do this in the next four well, months. So, I'm not well, suggesting that. that. Right. I just hated seeing it. Well, that's what led me to my next was question, the which is. That's the only thing. I'm not saying we should request the data. But a lot of these were the because moment. we have such a short amount of time. Yeah. That we think we should work on before the concept of a new. Yeah. And so, which is why the Justice System Commission is clearly number two. Um, because, yeah, that's why I don't think that people are saying this thing okay. to be yeah, so avoided. Okay. It's how I, I thought the whole concept was, yeah, yeah, right. what what do we have time to focus yeah. on while we're here? Mm -hmm. and we, we could sit all night talking about whether this should be moved up or this down. I, we made our vote. This is the priority. I think we, I don't see that anything is gained by uh, rehashing it again. Fine. Anyone disagree? No. I don't. I just think it was just clarity said. Yeah, I was asking okay. that. I wasn't suggesting that we change anything. No. Maybe we can call this priorities. Yeah. So yeah, I think that you know, I mostly mostly agree with that. Um, during the May meeting, you know, sort of can, can I feel like this happened even you when we made this decision at the last meeting. 
um, that the that the priorities list with the main purpose of it was just to get the top three priorities. Um, so I was just thinking about those. Um, and like leave the others. So you're right. For yeah. the right. commission yeah. Yeah. that is to come, right? That right. This yeah. is what we can focus on. Um, the uh, so the advisory slash review board's um, priority, um, vice council on proceeding with the police review board, provide advice recommendations through police oversight boards, identify suggestions slash recommendations, provide council for JSDF is not going to commission. Um, I guess do we do we want to sharpen that? Any well, especially yeah, separating them. They're and really then, and once again, these. yeah, okay. especially believing that we should separate them. I think what people, the were, focusing on, on, people were focusing on the review board. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. That's what I heard people So say. yeah, so should we call out the, just leave it at that, advise, police, advise council on proceeding with police review board. Cut the rest. Exactly. The rest goes into a review, advisory board report that I've been working on for reasons that are very unclear because there's no reason for it you know, anymore. Anyway, something else. Okay, great. Um, okay. I guess I, I move. Can we hear board. about the proposal for the Connect Commission? Yeah. Let's hear about that. Well, wait, come on, at least, we should at least ask for unanimous you know, consent. Just to make sure that, that like, nobody objects to that. So we're separating those two out, is that what? Oh, no, we're just, we're cutting at everything that. past the first article. So it's just advised council on proceeding with police review board. The rest isn't there anymore. Right, because that turns into a third one. Yeah. And therefore, That's it's a different. Task. Right. It was a different task, and you will ask me to condense things because the list was too long. You're so, good. You're good. So yeah, I'll right. unpack. So no, that them. works. So yeah, that but, uh, well. Um, but was it an advisory board or was it a review board that made it to that highest priority? Review board. Review board. We are we are revising history and we're saying that it's review board. If no one objects. Right. But it, I, I think that is. Now we're talking point. about a civilian review board. Mm -hmm. Yes. It was a prior. Yes. It was a bring to council, which we're going to do on the 17th. Mm -hmm. But the, but we're going to talk about it actually. Well, if we get around to right, it, we we'll let you talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't have much uh, to say about this um, recommendation. A much more complete recommendation is coming to the September meeting. It is being worked on. How's that? Oh, for the advisory for the justice system commission the commission right okay right which we've been right which is next on the list so that's what you're okay that's and we off. moved that's on <laughs> and we so, have moved on yeah. right. and, and, and it's going to be if you want to send me a written input that's awesome or if, the, if you guys want to talk about it a little bit more no i get <clears throat> this is good i gather you're going to submit this no matter what the opinion of the current justice system and task force is. I, mean, this I is am your, working your with the council made member who is developing a proposal for council. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't we, matter what I would like your thinks. input. But no, I didn't ask for the committee to decide what, the, what they wanted to recommend. No. Com recommendations to council could come from a lot of different places. They can come from council okay. members, they can come from commissions, they can come from groups of citizens and individual citizens. And yes, because there's been a lot of different points of view on the committee, um, I, I thought this was a better way to go about it, was to get input from people, um, but not for us to try as a committee to develop a proposal. So you're asking us to send, submit to you? Yeah, and I'm going to bring a more specific, I mean, if we could talk about it here too, but I, I didn't have anything more to bring at this meeting than I brought at the last meeting. So. But, um, and if you want to meet with me or, you know, less than, you know, a group of you want to meet with me, less than, as long as we don't make, go over the forum, we can, that's fine. Just contact me. So I, I would, I have a comment I'd like to make on it, um, and maybe we want at least some discussion as a group rather than sending individual comments to Judith. Um, the notion of accountability, we're talking about accountability in a lot of different ways around our justice system. 
And one of the things I've been thinking about a lot is what this group, this group, is or is not accountable for or has authority over. So the um, citizen emphasis Sean and others have made around Citizen Review Board as though this group had any power to enact that, which it does not. No power at all to do anything about that other than write a piece of paper and hand it off to council. Mm -hmm. And make a recommendation. And make a recommendation. And so when we begin to talk about a justice system commission, the accountability aspect to me needs to be very clearly stated. This is what this group has authority over and what it does not have authority over. Um, because I think it has led to um, frustration, among other things. With people coming here and then, why aren't you doing anything? Because you don't have the power to do anything. So, you can make so that that to council. You can make that other than that. As you want. Yeah, I, think, yeah. <laughs> I don't think there was any confusion about that. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Um, oh, okay, so you're just being clear about our powers, not like making a statement regarding what our powers are going to be. You saying, I want it to be spelled out. Okay. To be. Just to, yeah, just to, I wouldn't want it to be spelled out in such a way that, was, that would tip our hand regarding whether, especially if the review board ends up you know, not having really investigative powers to just review things, um, the question of whether it would act, of whether Supposing that we did recommend a review board, that we would necessarily want it to be a separate body or right. or be it the same body. I don't think that we need to tip our hand. That's a that. question that needs that to be addressed. That's a question that should be addressed after the exactly in that future proposal. Can we move into the board? Because if I'm doing this on the 17th, I want to. I mean, this is sure. happen tonight, but if people. Have right, any corrections? The, uh, I wouldn't mind. I mean, I wouldn't mind moving on. Anyone else have anything to say about the commission? I suppose there's some comments on the suggestion. That did this? The suggestion came that we just cut everything else out of the the, the highest priority. We've well, so, I mean, it was just it was made separated. to say that that Correct. this is going to be a council thing by a council member. To so if you want to talk about that. It would be best to talk to that council member who's going to be bringing it up to the council. So can, can I just make a citizen comment about this? Yeah. I mean, go ahead. All right. All right. So basically, um, I was not Are we back at the priorities? I'm sorry, I just got lost. Like, so now, back this is still about the commission, okay. correct? This yes, it's about the commission. Well, the commission? Well, there was this idea that we would just cut everything, we'll just remove the advisory and commissions from this goal. I just wanted to address that. I, I personally think that it's, it's worth keeping uh, at least some wording to make it broad enough so that the, this priority, to reflect this priority, could analyze different forms of advisory functions and, um, you know, commissionary functions. All right. So these this are is two different. Yeah, yeah. So that's what we were just talking about. I'm just, I'm just wanting to yeah. comment on that because it was on the agenda. Okay. Yeah, that, that, you know, rather than just cutting out everything besides the police review board, have some, process, yeah. have some reflection that, that this priority still is to, uh, more than just the review board. Okay, people, uh, really, if I'm going to present this, I really want everyone to read it and to let me get any corrections or, you know, so it can't just be my report. Is there a bio, 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 um, bio, so bio, I have bio. some, I have a little input. Great. <laughs> uh, so, um, the, the um, my suggestion is, and uh, this is from a member of council, doing it is, is that um, because this is going to be a precursor to thinking about the commission, the right. annual report. Um, so this what, is looking back. It's looking back, but there was a recommendation, and I think we can work partially off of our priorities list, 
of what we've accomplished, which you have very well articulated, what is in process, this is the way it was articulated to me, and what still, what, um, what work we, you know, had been given by council um, that still needs, by council and by our own priorities, that still needs to be completed. What's outstanding? What's outstanding? So it's well. I think it fits on the page. I think we do not want to go past two pages. So if I can put in a, maybe a bullet point, not a not a whole okay. short. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I think you could just. And then your conclusion. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we suggested. Okay, and then people who have a lot of responsibility for. The group, like the data group, John. Is this, if you turn to the next page, mm -hmm. is this uh, continuing goal make sound right? I mean, is that complete? Do we need more? Ditto Mayor's Court. In terms of negative impacts on the poor, I think it states the, the effort. Surveillance is also good. Sorry, I gave a thumbs up, but that wasn't appropriate. Okay, thumbs up. <laughs> I think surveillance is exactly on point. Okay. Yeah, and then the last one, the last one, which is 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 category of outstanding and it will probably be in the like, bullet points to fit on the page. Okay. I want and thank you so much for writing. Yeah. yeah, but I when I read the conclusion, yeah. I wanted uh, like one more sentence that was something like we made really good progress. Something oh. positive. Sounds too good. It's not it as badly good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, which was really <laughs> far. You can't push a rubber. Like, you're all crazy, but never so, going to give you one. So I'm that that was my to. one good progress. Still lots to do, maybe as part of the yes. conclusion. Yes. Okay. <laughs> you, you're welcome to add it to send me a sentence. It's okay. more laudatory than what I can And a period. I don't know what it's going. <laughs> <laughs> but there's no period. Oh, there's no period. Yeah. Well, that's why it's going. You just say yeah, ongoing right. instead of yeah. laughing. Ongoing and no period. <laughs> <laughs> Never ending. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Okay, so this is the report that I will present as the biannual report on the 17th. I don't, I mean, would you expect any discussion? Probably not. I'll probably just be said, oh, that's great. Thank you. Right, it's in <laughs> But I guess we do, we HRC get oh, questions. No. I mean, we will get. Do we think there'll be a discussion about this? Yeah. Just like, questions? Yeah. Maybe questions? Yes. I Are think there questions you'd like, a question you'd like to have somebody ask? Mm -hmm. yeah. I, think I mean, it's quite self explanatory. <laughs> <laughs> it's clear to <laughs> 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 Right, okay. I mean, do, do we do would it be helpful if a member of council asked something like you know based on this what do you think is the most important priority going forward or I mean does this group have a, a, a you well, know I think the commission proposal is next and that's the next mm -hmm. that's going forward yeah, I mean Which maybe I not that question but is there a question right. is what I'm saying okay this is a, it's an because offer. you're offering yourself. I, I'm offering to ask it. I mean, it, it's an opportunity if there's something that that this group wants to say. Well, all I would say is, it, I mean, I this is what I would say personally, not necessarily the whole committee, but I feel that council, like this group, has struggled a little bit about how to implement. How do you go? I mean, okay, this is the recommendation. Council says, yeah, we agree, we like that, and then nothing happens. Yeah. Right. So implementation would be a task, in my mind, that the council would give a little more thought to. I how agree. do they respond? 
if, if the group, if the future commission is also giving recommendations, what will be the council responsibility? I will say that our conversation with Vaughn was extremely helpful in thinking about the question of accountability. And so, you know, you make a recommendation, but what then? And so, because of that conversation we had with him, um, you know, I started thinking about the past recommendations we may have had. And so, what have we, you know, what specifics, how do we know if it's being done or not kind of thing? And, um, and so, I think, um, you know, we can still, we can look back, but that definitely will inform the new uh, proposal because it's not going to be the commission's responsibility to make sure things are happening. It's going to be council's relationship to the village manager and it's got to be more concrete because I, you know, it's just, you know, we kind of expected, I think, staff would know where to go forward with it, but I think this is an area for it's partially that it's kind of new to what we do. Yes. It's not as concrete as building sidewalks are, you know. Yeah. Um, speaking of concrete. Speaking of concrete. <laughs> and um, <laughs> you know, it's uh, and it's you know you know if somebody, you know, you know, if some of our administrators think, yeah, we like that guidelines. Is that enough? I mean, how do we actually, what does it actually mean to implement it? So, you know, a commission could say, and this is some ways to measure it, uh, and, but it's really council giving that direction, and then we want to report back on those, how, that, how you're measuring it and so that we know it's happening. So I apologize that it's taken two years to figure out that. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think we need to have it be a judgment. We're just going to, an observation. Yes. No, I think it's an important one. I think it has been part of the frustration of the group is this feeling like you know, we're making, working hard, we're making these recommendations. What's happening to them? Is anything, are they, is something, has it changed anything in how people are doing things? So. All right, there we go. Does uh, anyone else have anything to say about the final report? That would be going out with the 17th, right? Yeah. All right, we'll be moving on to the draft report the Citizens Review Board by Penn. Okay, right. so at our last meeting, people um, wanted this to have go forward in, you know, just go forward in some way. And so I did give it a little more attention, even though I kept saying I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm not going to do it. I just gave it a little more attention, not a lot more attention. Um, I've added in a few more examples from both Dayton and from. Um, Cambridge, Massachusetts, um, and put in, you know, two or three little, like, these people, like the National Association for Civilian Oversight of Law Enforcement is a very strong advocate for citizen review boards, and they have a lot of articles, resources, and consulting. Whereas, of course, the police, any of the professional police organizations feel that, um, which I think is shared in this community and in every community that the police chief, law enforcement leaders, can't transfer their administrative accountability and legal responsibilities because of statutory rules and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So they are, uh, even though they're positive about advisory boards, they are not at all positive about it. And many, um, I guess uh, what I've noticed is that many of the groups that got started, including the one that got started here in Dallas Springs years ago, crash and burn pretty fast because of that. So it's something that, so we didn't agree to have a recommendation. We agreed to bring the information to council. So I threw in a draft recommendation in order to affirm the Yellow Springs Police Department commitment to transparency, transparency and justice, we recommend that the village council create a special committee to continue the research and feasibility of the citizen review mechanisms to address possible citizen complaints about officers' actions. So I'm open for any response to that recommendation. And the, and the question about whether everybody wants it to be a recommendation. Because we didn't report it. Well, um, 
this is the kind of recommendation, this, this, in the, this uh, special committee theoretically could be the new commission, I, I think, or do you think not? I wouldn't go you would there. Separate. I would absolutely not go there. Okay. This is, this is deep water. Okay. This is very deep water for a number of reasons. It should be separate. It, no, it would not be part of the commission. Could make a record. Could be the body that that does so the we research not, and make it oh. and makes the recommendation. It shouldn't be the same thing. Is all I'm saying. It, it could be part oh. of that committee's yeah. work. Yeah, sure. But anyway, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. But no, it should not be the same thing. And right. that won't be part. Of, yeah. Absolutely not. Well, the so question is, how quickly do you do. want the committee? How quickly should the council act on this? Well, I just thought, I remember Al saying, talking about that this being under village government in any sort of way is a bad idea. It's almost like asking for corruption. Those aren't his words, but he just said it shouldn't be under the village uh, government uh, because of the possibilities of corruption. I think that that's a really good point as well and if you're the question is is it going to be a system of review board or is it going to be something that's going to accept complaints and be able to um, basically give punishments to officers breaking policies that sort of thing it's i'm just i see why it's deep water because it's just yeah. depending on what is the most important aspect of what you want out of this. This can go a hundred different ways and this kind of shows you that, yeah, if you're in a city, you got to do it way more like this versus a small area which may just take written complaints and that be pretty well, uh, well discussed. I, uh, I have a, maybe more research or maybe contacting this association that's a big advocate for this work, but I have not yet seen any program where citizens can do investigation. They cannot. Legally. Right. They cannot. And they do not. They can review the investigation. Right. They can take the complaint. I mean, there's a lot that citizens can do, but they do not do the investigation, period. People either hire an attorney if it's serious, like our New Year's Eve thing, to hire somebody to do it, or if it's low level, you know, they'll have their group, their advice, their review board, which was five or six people who've had some training do it. Review so, the investigation, but not do the investigation. The advisory, I mean the review board, <laughs> the review board would have special training and often, and it's often five or six people, including somebody with legal background. Often it's a retired, also a retired police officer, it could be a citizen or two. So they can do some levels of investigation. And it has to be determined, you know, they're not investigating a police murder, but they might be investigating some other kinds of lower level complaint about an officer. Right. But my understanding about it is when you get to the point of wanting to um, move forward with whether or not a police officer has done something wrong. Right. That is an internal process to the police department. And that's got law all around it, as yeah. far as I understand. So, you know, citizens might have input to that, and then a lot of review boards, once that's all done, they, review the they will look at what happened and say, we think it wasn't thorough enough, or we disagree. But but the they don't do the investigation. Right. Yeah. But that's but part the, of the problem. Mm -hmm. But there are, it isn't necessarily in the police department exactly. It'll, it will be like a police standards board, which yes. might be not in, for example, we don't have a police standards no, we don't. board. No. But they're, they exist. I mean, they're, yeah. So they could be used for an investigation. <laughs> but. I mean, it's it's very complicated, and I, but I guess our question is: Do we want? Are we putting out a message to the council that there are enough citizens who want this and are concerned about it that the council should immediately create 
some entity that is doing more research and coming up with more recommendations. I advocate for that. Right, but then that a group be created to focus on it. Uh, on because it be, learn about it. There's no way this group to focus on it. Plus, we just don't have, like you were saying, um, anything that we could really do other than just say, here's research, here's what we think. Maybe if there was a group that had a little more. Well, <laughs> right. Yeah. John. Oh, yeah. So I feel like this that when we modified our um, priorities to, you know, say that the, the advisory board's one was advised council on proceeding with police with, with a police review board, we were affirming that we ourselves or our successor or, or would um, work on, you know, continuing the research into a police review board. Now I'm all in favor of asking council to ask us to do things. Which is a great way to make sure that everybody's on the same page, that like we're not doing things councils want us to do. So if we wanted to like recommend the council affirm like its commitment to like us continue to research this, that would be great. But not like create a separate group because we are because like well, John, just a minute. I, I talked about this at the last meeting, maybe you don't remember that here in Yellow Springs, it was the council that killed the last program. And in other communities that I've looked at, um, Asheville, Carolina comes to mind, a couple of others, it's always the council that ends up killing the review boards. So if they are the ones who actually set it up, it's a different, it's a different kind of energy. If they ever take responsibility for it, That's they say we need it, and we're take, we're going to set up a committee, and that committee is going to report to us, and then we're going to do it. Because if it go, if it gets set up, if we say, oh, we want to do this. No, no, no. The recommendation. No, when I say like continue research, no, like a recommendation still needs to be actually developed. Develop 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 recommendation for the end of the year of yeah. what we. Oh, I'm not saying any. We don't need to specify time frame. Right? This is mean, setting ourselves up for failure. But, I'm you know, confused. No, I, I mean, what I'm. Can I? I'm sorry. Please go ahead. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is a very good um, document. I, mean, I think it's really helpful. So the next step is developing. So if none of them do investigations, and I don't think it's actually possible, um, I don't think that's within our capacity as a community to do an investigation, even if some places do. I can't see us doing that. But this thing about to actually develop a, a, a recommendation around complaint intake. Uh, review the investigation. I mean, as I recall the meeting I missed that I listened in on in June, uh, I heard Ellis saying, wait a minute, may, this is within the capacity of the community. A review board, it would be separate from the commission, a commission, assuming if we go forward with the commission, that would take, would, would take a complaint intake and review the investigation. And that if there's an appeal process, you know, maybe that's a I don't think we should do any more. I think the council should do it. I, I'm really convinced of that. Uh, but they're doing it through us. I don't know. And anyway, I'm not doing it. I've already made that clear. I'm done. Yeah, you're so, done. Yeah. So who else wants to do it? Go ahead. But I'm telling you, don't. <laughs> the council really. Uh, but how would council do it? I they mean, would say we we ask like whatever we would ask our solicitor to develop this idea or something. Well, yeah. they would have to have a, a small well, group we, of people. Once yeah. we're yeah, I promise to a get small to group of people who would then and they could be some citizens, a police officer, the chief, whoever, who say, okay, what are our, our ideas about how we go forward? What other research? Who could we go visit? They could keep working on it. Because this is not a total comprehensive. Report. So it's a task force. It's a task force. Well, citizen review board. Mm -hmm. Yes. Excuse me. And, and sorry. And you're saying so why I, isn't it just part of the sure justice system? Well, is that what you're saying? I mean, effectively, we've already said that it's part of this by identifying it as one of our top priorities, the things that we want to keep working on. I think it got like the most. We didn't say we we're going to keep working on it. We said we'd give it to council. Yeah. 
Okay. So right, that's what I remember as well. That's exactly what this we're is the we'll difference. Is you want it wrapped into the commission notion, yeah. and you want no, no, no. He doesn't. Want he does. <laughs> no, you don't want does. it to be. You don't want it to be the review board a commission. Do you? No, 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 he's no, saying the the right. <laughs> right that they would be responsible for, for the research. Yeah, 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 and Pat's okay. saying it needs to have a separate group that's okay. not the it commission. Comes out of the council. The council takes responsibility. They specify which people with which skills. Okay. Council does need to go on that task force and do that task. Okay. <laughs> um, I also, you know, she just mentioned that conversation with Vaughn, and I left that meeting with a couple of main takeaways, but the biggest one is that if we're going to be successful with this, the council needs to have a sense of skin in the game. Absolutely. And not to delegate it to a group yeah. of citizens. And that once it's once whatever it is is firmly established, then maybe a citizen you know, group support gets involved. But he was very compelling that the council needs to direct the village manager, we need to direct the chief of police, and needs to have skin in the game. And so that really affected my thinking about how we go about this. And with, and with that in mind, the other thing is, a special committee, like for example, the finance subcommittee, we can move faster because we're an advisory committee to the to the village manager. It doesn't take, you know, three meetings. months to even like <laughs> do anything at all. So you can move more quickly to get things done. And I appreciate what you said about different people with different roles because this would have to this needs to be examined of including you know, things that are maybe less interesting to some people, but things like what's the head count, uh, what's the staff support time, what's the cost of doing this, what facilities are needed, what, I mean, there's all those things that are kind of not juicy maybe, but, but if, if, if in order for us to have this, it would need its own little infrastructure, and it's a lot of work, and it's a lot of resource time. That's part of the deep water, isn't just the interpersonal or cultural issues, it's actually just running the thing yep so and that that I understand can really bring it down so that's why I think having it be a committee with people that have particular skill sets to you know you go work on <laughs> this aspect of it you go work on this aspect of it you go work, helps to make this happen faster or or evaluate feasibility yeah. I'm for that, but when you're talking about to to run the thing, you're not talking about the actual review board. No, no, no. no. You're no. Just, you're just to just develop even figure the out the infrastructure. It has, you know, I know that you said it's like the concrete, right? It, it, even though it's not a sidewalk, it still needs to have a infrastructure yeah. Yeah. and processes and policies and staff time and you know we we're so strapped for staff time. It needs to have a budget. All that kind of stuff needs to be. Figured out. If you take any one it's part of this, like just complaints, mm -hmm. just right. complaints alone. Just complaints. How are the different ways that people can make complaints? Mm -hmm. Who hears the complaints? And to whom? Right. To, to whom? whom? How do they? Yeah. I mean, any one little thing of this is like something that has to be thought through. Mm -hmm. so. Yes. Um, so you guys are saying basically a group structurally identical to JSDF committee of of council. Mm -hmm. However, um, just different people. Or are you saying a committee that with and fact just with, one, and just with one job. And with just one developing job. Developing this proposal. But structurally identical in the sense that they're appointed citizens by council. Well, not, not just citizens. Not citizens. citizens. That would be the solicitor, probably the police chief or legal people, legal people. Mm -hmm. police people. Yeah, village manager. Okay, but they report directly to council. Correct. Mm -hmm. All uh, public meetings. No, so they aren't necessarily public meetings. The um, finance subcommittee, that's not a public mm -hmm. meeting, is it? No. Okay. But, but nothing will be decided before it's going to go back to council, so that is where the public discussion happens. But the development of the idea that happened is what you're kind of talking about. Well, it, it's, if an it's, an, it's an it option. It doesn't have to be that way. Yeah, no, it's just an option. Right. I mean, when you're trying to figure out things like headcount and staff time and budget and 
things like that. That's not the kind of thing that this, a group that mimics this, again, well, through our conversation about um, but it's, what can be done by some people and not by others. But it's not going to be a budget of the village. That's, I guess, my point. A, a citizen, a civilian review board, should it be decided to be developed, has to be relatively independent, doesn't it? I think that's what this group would have to figure <laughs> that's out. That's the whole right. right. It would have to be independent, otherwise it's well, not. Well, that's what they have to figure out. It will have. It will have financial. It will have costs. Okay. I mean, is it a five hundred one c three then? Or yeah. So I mean, exactly. Yeah, it, this is the. Yeah, that's sure. Has some training. Yeah. Yes, yeah, adult training costs. <laughs> Insurance. Right. So when they get sued. Yeah. So obviously, I mean, the reason that this rose on our priorities list is essentially due to the continuing agitation of citizens. So were this work to be cut off from a context of public meetings, it seems likely. Well, it you, you guys follow what I'm saying? That that the that the continued pressure would uh, be different. And especially if you know staff is being involved, also arguably the counter pressure would be possibly much stronger. The continued pressure to uh, move in the same direction. Okay. Uh, I mean, so yeah. So I just feel like it's not going to be. I'm concerned about having. If we're talking about a board that is is. Um, I'm sorry, I was just mumbling to myself, but um, it's going to be, you know, basically independent of the police department, then I start thinking, so how can the chief be involved in it's developing that proposal? So there's From a process perspective, just to funnel that that information in. <laughs> just, just figure they, out the process. See how big a task it is? Correct. It's, right. So right. It, it, I think we're we not going to figure it all out. But we need to differentiate so between the operation of the committee and the planning <laughs> piece of it. So in other words, we would have to talk to the police because there are conduit of data kind of thing. Okay. Uh, I guess. Are we? Would you? Would I don't think like we're curious. Sure. I'm concerned. I'm not curious as to. Yeah, if you want to open it since up. Since they've been able to, yeah. Okay, and thank you for yeah. So I'm uh, sure you raise your hand first. Rebecca will get to you. Okay. So my thing is, don't kick it down the road. Like, do it. Do the work. Roll up your sleeves and do the work now in this group. And um, because if you look at the mandate that this group was created by. A, a civilian review board or, or oversight board of police, really it ticks just about every single box, like, I don't know, maybe eight out of ten boxes is a response to. And, and so, you know, don't, don't leave it to some other group. Like, actually take on doing this. And if, if um, I would suggest, you know, that it's been suggested that the justice system commission could uh, make such a recommendation. Um, I think it would be more appropriate that this group ask for an extension of their mandate past the two years um, to, to really hammer this out, saying, look, we, we've done all these different things. They've been, you know, they've significant, they're not insignificant, but this last thing is that we think is really important. It's one of our highest priorities. So please give us more time to work on this. And and maybe even say something like, certainly, don't stop the work we're doing if you don't create this commission. So I don't know how many votes you have for the commission. I, I mean, there's two people here, two council members here. Uh, I don't know about the other ones. You know, you need two out of you need more than two out of five. So, what if the justice system commission never gets created, and this gets kicked over to the police department to figure out how to regulate themselves? You know what I'm saying? Like. One of the biggest barriers in, in uh, setting up these review boards uh, and having them be effective is that they often drift into this place of being a whitewash for the police. Oh, we, we just investigated for the past six or you know th six months or five years about this one incident that everyone was mad about, and we just discovered that the police did everything correctly, and there was nothing you know when when in fact the, the community feels that's not the case. So so I think that. Um, you know, as far as the, the recommendation here, um, you know, to, right, that's to, what to really kick it down the road, I think. What do you think? Do you believe with just this here that we'd be able to start something, anything from this? I so mean, as, far as, yeah, as far as take, taking uh, what, what Pat was done, and I acknowledge that Pat actually created this, you know, page, two-page 
three-page three um, thing, even, with, even though there was a lot of resistance from her to actually, you know, look into this, uh, that she did it. I think that's, that's admirable. Um, but, you know, and that she doesn't want to do it anymore. So somebody else would have to take it on and do and actually look into how, how this would be created. But there's, you know, there's a lot of um, things missing here. There's also some typos I noticed. So I feel this is incomplete to go to council as it is. Um, All right, and, and also a lot of time. There we go. I want to make sure that we get to other citizens. Uh, Yes, please, Rebecca, sorry. Yeah, Sharon. Sharon. Sharon, sorry. Yeah. Oh, okay, so okay. Um, Well, you know, I, I, I don't know an awful lot about uh, the particulars, but I, I would compare the police department to the fire department. And everything the fire department does, they can account for. They know exactly how many tires they use on, on each truck, how many trucks they have, how much hose they've got what each and every personnel does every minute that they do it. It's accounted for. Now, I don't see, I, I believe in democracy. And I really do not see why the law-abiding citizens should not have an accountability of what the police department is doing. Why should they have a little fiefdom where they don't have to tell what they're doing? I mean, that's not democracy to me. And bless you all for doing this, even if it seems hopeless. I don't think democracy can have too many gadflies. <laughs> and, and I'm frustrated as to why they don't have to make an accounting of themselves. How do I know? I mean, we don't have a donut shop. You know, sorry. But, but, I mean, how do I know that they're not just out there playing games on their, on their um, phones or talking to their girlfriend or more sinister? And I have written this in, in, a, in a letter to the editor, too. In my past, many years ago, I was an abused wife. And I had to call the police. My, all my... All of my own personal, I'm not talking about Yellow Springs police, I'm talking about police in general. All my personal interactions with police is calling them for help. And I can tell you, I had some very bad situations. I had a policeman ask my husband, or say to my husband one time, I have called the policeman. And, and the policeman goes to my husband and says, I know how they are, but you can't hit them too hard. Oh, boy. I mean, those are the kind of things that happen to me. And because of that, I belonged to a group called Task Force for Battered Women. And at that time, I learned that of all, all of the occupations that men do, the ones that have the, because all police were men at that time, and that they were, there are more uh, violent people become police than any other now I, I, that's why I like a person that lives in the community where they work because people know whether they're violent or not. And um, oh, I, I'm getting emotional, but I, I mean this is important. It's important for them to account. Every other person that works for the citizens have to account. So it sounds like transparency then to you is Oh, is a huge very focus. much. Can I just make a, a very quick statement? Um, and I'm Rebecca. Yes, and you're Moore. Rebecca. Yes, yeah, sorry. I'm I Rebecca. Moore. Um, just real quick, I you know I, I I overheard you say that you went to Cambridge, Massachusetts, and that's a very different community than our community. I remember Pat you speaking. Um, about some of the difficulties in the deep water that we're, we're in and entering this territory. But to me, even getting a start on a, on, a, um, on a review board for the police is important. I'm a nice person. I've lived in Yellow Springs for going on 25 years probably now. And for the most part, I really try to stay out of trouble and so on. I even wave to the police. I'll bet you anything. I bet you anything that has gotten me out of a few speeding tickets. You know, just being nice to them. But on the other hand, I walk around town a lot and I speak with people and I hear 
a lot of people who are um, trying to, uh, to, to go over past complaints, but those complaints are still being litigated. And I'd like to think that in Yellow Springs, um, we're a little bit, we're, we're, we're going to at least try to do better than other communities um, have. Um, I said this once at one of the subgroup committee meetings, that most of the time we're asking a lot of our police force. They are not very well trained, and for the most part we're asking them to handle mental health um, complaints and um, lost pets and that, that sort of thing. Um, we ask a lot of them. They don't have a lot of training, but we give them an awesome power. We give them a very awesome power, and I think it was you, Pat, who once said at a meeting that all the police have to do is claim self-defense, and they've, they've got it. Um, in some ways, I'd really like to, to, to hope that, that we don't get into the kind of situations that really make big national headlines, and um, that we really consider not pulling the trigger. I mean, maybe the situation would have been better if the police hadn't been called in the first place, but once they're called, I, I just like a way to review that, to review that happens. Yeah. And I appreciate everything you guys have done. You guys have been great. Are there any other um, comments? Yeah, comments. I just you know, uh, thinking about this, I, I can't see how it makes sense for this to come up at the same meeting as we're talking about the commission and the biannual report. I'm going to talk with Brian since he does agenda planning to see when he thinks this makes sense. Are you saying delay this? No, I'm not saying delay it. I'm wondering if we can move it forward to the first meeting. Because it just sure, feels that with, with oh, okay. first. Right, the earlier we yes. talked to council about it. I'm uh, just thinking. Thing, right. The third. third. Are you in town? Before I ask that question. No, it's not the third, because that's uh, Labor Day. Isn't it? That's oh. Labor Day. So the fourth? The fourth. It'll be the fourth. Well, I mean, I, no, you're not going to be else. here. Oh, okay. Well, then that's not going to work. It feels like, yeah, trying to both be at that meeting may be a little complicated. We may have to delay one of the discussions still. Okay. But let me, I'd like to have clarity about the draft recommendation, which was never voted yes. on yes. or agreed to, um, to recommend, and we could just skip it and not have a recommendation. But this recommendation was that the village council creates the special committee to continue research and create a proposal for what we do for this I like those words, create a proposal. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Because that feels more active then. We recommend that the village council create a proposal. No, no. So create a committee to create yes. a proposal. Yes. yes. Appoints the committee to create a proposal. Where would that be placed? Is it? Oh. Oh. He just asked where that would be placed if we were to put that in. When we, that it's the proposal, right? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. yeah. I thought it was a good Create question. a special committee to create a proposal yeah, where, to where research the feasibility. Where, 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 where are you placing it? It's at the end very end. At the way? The very end? Oh, research and feasibility of four of your citizens review. Which is recommended in August 2018. No. Mm -hmm. We recommend the Village yes. Council create a special okay. committee to continue the research oh. and create a proposal mm -hmm. for a citizen review mechanism. Yeah, I just want to know where it was. I guess in terms of looking at our priorities, just to say impact on the poor, that's the third priority. Um, I'm on that committee and we're not working, just to say. Um, uh, and wait, wait, same very, I, I guess I'm, the, the reason I'm bringing it up now is because I'm looking at our priorities list for the end of the, to the end of the year work, and I guess I'm, I know Pat doesn't work, want to work on this, is I'm wondering are there any <coughs> We want the committee to. We want the council committee to work on this. 
Does this get more into the proposal? Sorry? Yes, it does. Because that, my question was, is there a way for this? We are that committee of currently of the. I mean, we're doing a lot of stuff. I'm just just saying that our third rec, our third priority, unless somebody else is going to pick it up, is not being worked on. And so I wondered if there was the juice in this committee to make that recommendation. That's all. That's the way it would affect your proposal. Yeah. I mean, I, I'd like to know that people have heard what Lisa said and what I said, which is it must come from the council. I have a strong I, opinion I, on this. I think you strong, strong, strong. So, strong. Strong. so I feel like it, it. I feel like if we recommend that in order to affirm the Yale Springs Police Department's commitment to transparency and justice, we recommend that Village Council um, affirm JSCF in their continued research to create a proposal um, regarding a citizen review mechanism to address any possible citizen complaints about um, officers' actions, that that is coming from council. It's just instead of creating a separate committee, they're directing us actively to but do we, it. We don't have and the expertise. Like exactly. We do not have the expertise. Right. We spend all that time talking about the deep water. We don't have it. And the kind of special skill set that so that is, special committee would require in order to come up with a feasible proposal that wasn't immediately knocked out of the block because it violated six different state and federal laws. That's what I think. Can't or don't want to. But that's, it's no different than any of our work, though. Can't. Would love what to. Are the would love to. to make a recommendation. Not a lot. Not we do not have the skill set. What is the skill set that we need? We I need think to be the police need. in order to recommend how we will regulate ourselves. I mean, this is where this is going. No, no, no. Like no, I'm just thinking if we need like Chris Connor to participate, that might be that might be something we could actually ask him to work with a subgroup of this group, of, or and is there somebody else who needs to be added? I, I'm just going to invite I'm someone from the Dayton police. Yeah. We need police presence. The 365 group spent like a huge amount of time looking into this too. They They're make yes, determined it wasn't feasible, but they must have a lot of research or a reason why they thought that. So maybe it's, some, it's the, very the close to exactly not being. It's very close There's to not being. Feasible. Numerous ways to What do would it. make it feasible or make it possible it is it. having the expertise mm -hmm. to really think it through before it gets launched. Mm -hmm. I guess I was just wanting they to crash. articulate they what is the what is I'll the. Just, the One hundred police departments out of eighteen thousand police departments have been successful in that. No, you don't want it to crash. It's already crashed once in Yale Springs. You don't want it to crash again. You've no, got to have the people who could really make it. And maybe they'll only start with one piece of it, like complaint of life. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I, I don't, or I think we need a little counsel, but I don't think it's, it may not necessarily be Chris. I mean, I think we need someone with legal expertise in this particular. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I will. Go ahead and move my amendment, noting that um, if, it, if it passes, then this doesn't have to go to notice and comment because it will be an internal JSDF matter. Um, so, so. <laughs> you're, I feel like you're it's a bad adding, putting JSDF in there as the yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel like it's gonna fail. But yeah. well, so what's your just, just what's your proposal? What's just your, your, back your proposal is to ask them for us to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just get their affirmation. I think there's a point to that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, okay. um, do, do I get a second? Second. Okay. I'd appreciate it if you'd restate your proposal. Absolutely. My proposal is to amend the recommendation to cross out create a, a special committee and replace with um, a firm. JSTFs, and then, as you say, continued research. But I guess the question is, do we have anybody here who wants to work on it? Because if we don't, then we don't have to do it. And I have to say, I'm feeling sort of dissed by this. Because I put I a lot of time in this, a lot of effort into this. Well, I don't no know. one is listening to what I have found out, what I, what I know from doing this work. So, but I've been yeah. asking, what is the expertise? And if it's a lawyer, it's not and just a lawyer. Okay. I mean, it has to be somebody out of police state professional standards bureau. It has to be some level of citizen 
you know, citizen representation that has some weight to it that people really appreciate or recognize that person. I mean, it has to have a, probably a member of, co of uh, council. I mean, it has to have certain, you know, expertise about and willingness to research the problems and the issues. This group, when it, not the group that's studying this, but the group that comes out of it, has to do a lot of training about understanding where where a complaint goes or how it could be addressed. Does it have to have an outside solicitor or can it be done internally in the police department? I mean, the police complaints are everything from very serious to really trivial things. You know? So there's a whole range of those things. And, you know, it's just a matter of how, so, so if there were reviews, okay, cool. if there's reviews, what is the review? Can they look at, you know, what's the confidentiality issues there? It's legal and confidentiality. Have to be researched because somebody actually wants it to happen. Okay, so. I mean, it's quarter after nine. A Pat has said uh, at the last meeting, she and, and, uh, and Bill have gone down and and visited many places, done a lot of work. She's come up with, a, I think, a very thoughtful proposal. With all the work she's done in this, she's come to the conclusion that, that, that it needs to have a more expertise than, than she has been able, as she and Bill and others have been able to put in. I mean, I think, I think we're being awful disrespectful of the work they put in to to go on for half an hour now about uh, berating her or saying that she hasn't done, she hasn't done what she, she should have done. Well, I mean, it's very. Nobody's berating. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If I don't agree, it doesn't mean I disrespect somebody, and I don't appreciate the implication of that. I respect Pat very much, and I well, respect Well, then why do keep saying the same thing over and over? I haven't said the same thing over and over. Uh, it occurred right. to me, but anyway, uh, let's just vote yes. on it. Let's just right. vote on Call it. So, once again, what is your... So, to cross out, create a special committee and say it for JSTF's continued work and the rest of it. All right, we've had discussion. And I uh, and all right, and there was second. All in favor? A one. Say aye. Of uh, the uh, proposal the to change the it. So that, right. Of John's recommendation, make a of change. John's recommendation to have it come back to Justice System Task Force. All, uh, <clears throat> all of the post. And I'm abstaining. <laughs> um, <laughs> so would please the chair, say. I'd like to um, move to amend only to um, specify that the, that the special voted? committee hold. Uh, but hasn't it been voted on? He's no. making a new amendment. I'm making a new amendment. Only, only that the special committee hold stuff. public meetings. Um, all, only to specify that the that the special committee that we're recommending that they create hold public meetings. That, that is, so that would be um, to create a yeah, gotcha. so special public committee. Just just add the word public, yeah, and I think that, that should clarify that intention. intention. Yeah. Gotcha. For whoever council is going to. Yeah. All right. So everyone, clear one. This is a new motion. All in favor. I don't know. No, so the discussion. So it's not an advisory. It's committee. not an advisory. It's not a meet the, the meets, public meeting. It's right. Like Separately, in order to meet with council, it's a public group that would meet. Like this one. Yes. Like this one. Not Only separate. Not this one. Not, not in one. secret. You're saying public meeting, so it would be. So, that, so, so the citizens right. can come in and participate. We're just saying that it would have to be public. Yes. And, right. I, I, I strongly yeah I strongly support that given the history of put that this issue. into this on the recommendation yeah yeah just have the word public right. in front of so so for, so, so so for, so I'm clear what you said yeah. restate it again so I understand okay so it's an amendment to add the word public between special and committee okay can you say it? can you can you say what you recommend yeah the, in order to affirm the Alice Springs Police Department's commitment to transparency and justice, we recommend that the Village Council create a special public committee to, can you read the rest of that? I know that we already have To continue the research and create a proposal. A proposal. The research and proposal? No, special. That, that part's not even. Right here, so. Yeah. 
I'm going to go to the public committee to continue the research mm -hmm. and oh, and proposal and proposal. That's what I said. Right, right. Proposal of a citizen review mechanism to address any possible citizen complaints about officers' actions. Mm -hmm. So you recommend in one word be put in. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I'm suggesting that that should be left to council to decide whether this committee is a public one or not a public one, which is why I will vote against it. And I second. All right. Uh, all in favor of the new amendment proposal? Wow. Right. All opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. And I think the, 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 the opposal, the, the opposing of it so, is because. I just stand by the exact same reason. So I just put because it's, it's, it's council's that, that, decision. That would be the council's decision anyway. That's really fine. Right. That's really fine. Right. Right. Go and talk like to, to them. I'd like to inform the committee that this is, of course, a substantive proposal that the committee would normally submit to notice and comment. I feel like it, we haven't talked about that, so I wanted to give the, give anyone an opportunity to make a motion for us to bypass the notice and comment process if they so if they felt like they wanted to do that. Otherwise, we'll just do it through notice and comment as usual. I'll have this go to the book. Okay. Right. The whole report? Right. Uh, this is this, how you do yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it would just be the whole report and the recommendation, because it is a substantive recommendation. It would, by default, go through notice and comment, unless somebody wants to make an argument that my interpretation of the notice and comment process is wrong. Or alternatively, we, if someone would like to make a motion, then we um, suspend that rule. Uh, by, by the notice and comment policy, it only takes a simple majority to suspend the rule. What is the time? Because that's what had this. Yeah. That's my main question. So we the, want to get this to council quickly. So right, right. So the notice and comment process takes until you know our next regular cycle. Meeting. So so. So I move to suspend it. Second. 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 Suspending the comment rule. <laughs> Com process. Oh. What John said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Suspending okay, so the comment rule. Yeah, yeah. Suspending it for, for the purpose of this proposal so that it can just, so that it can it just be moved without having public comment. For all opposed. Yeah. Okay, so it fails. No, wait, what was it? Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the motion to suspend it. Well, oh, you're, you're also right, against let's, let's start again. So, you, so, so, so I, I, if you I, vote in favor of it, this my, my, let me let me let me ask my question. My question sure. is, you, now we're voting to suspend the word. No. 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 I don't know. So we're voting. Uh, notice and comment process. process where it gets put in the newspaper. It gets so, like so mayor's court, court, all I think there's voted time. Tonight was for it to go to notice and comment. Be it's not going to council yet. Oh no, there's no time. Is yeah. this coming to the second meeting? September. And so this and so this and would need so to go through the same thing so unless we would vote to suspend that, then it would go so straight to council. Okay. There's time. Though. There is time. Okay. okay. I mean, because this is the 14th, and we meet again on the 11th, and it's not going to council until the 17th. Until the 17th. Okay. So Fine. there's time. Fine. Okay. That's okay. Good. So I so no so no withdraw my vote, right. <laughs> vote, my whatever that was. <laughs> all right. so I mean, it's, it's yeah. nice, yeah. but it is fine. Just didn't want like the to be yeah, we're doing the oh, process right. again. Okay. Yeah, I'll do our video. Right, so I need to now. send this one to Judy to. I don't think that the committee actually agreed or had a vote that this is a recommendation we are taking. Right? Did we? That's an actual Did we actually vote on that? We okay. voted on two amendments. Though. Oh, that's right. We didn't vote on the recommendation <laughs> itself. Oh my God, the recommendation itself could fail. I assume it would pass, of course. But yes, let's move. Go ahead and take it. The actual recommendation is not. <laughs> yes, we should do that. Good job. And I just want to point out, I'm not voting because you have a quorum and I'm the alternate, so I'm just not voting. Yeah. Right. No. Okay. Yeah, I just yeah, wanted. Yeah. See if you're wondering why I'm sitting here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's vote on that. <laughs> All right. So. Yes, take it to we the, the slight wording change that we just 
In order so, to affirm the Yellow Springs Police Department commitment to transparency and justice, oh, okay. we recommend that the Village Council of Yellow Springs, Yellow Springs, I will clean it up a little bit, assign whatever, a special committee to continue the research for a citizen review mechanism to address any possible, oh, and create a proposal for a citizen review mechanism to address any possible citizen complaints to address any citizen complaints, we leave out the policy book because we know they're really the one. Citizen complaints about officers and actions. No, no, we actually have voted on whether this is. Okay. Because it's a report in here, so we're now asking if this is a recommendation or more than a report, or is it just a little bit of a report? So I move we accept this recommendation. Is that how you do it? <laughs> <laughs> do we have any seconds? You do. Is there a second? Aren't you going to second your own thing? I'm okay, I'll second. <laughs> <laughs> what did you mean for this to be a recommendation? I wasn't sure. Well, truthfully, I wasn't sure. That's really what I figured. Sure. That's why, yeah. Yeah, that's why I wanted to go about it. All right. It is the next step, so we assume we want to do the next step. Correct. Okay. All in favor? All opposed? All right, we will be taking this after notice, after notice and comment. This will be going to uh, Council on the 17th as a recommendation. I sent it to Julie Jane, put it in the paper. Okay. All right, working group reports, what, is there a way to postpone? I move that we so postpone. We postpone, so, all right. Wait, uh, who wants to second that one? Let's, all right. It's too late. Work that with Laura and Dave. All right. Okay, let's try well, it. Well, no, yeah. <laughs> Can we do the agenda for next? Yes, that's exactly what I wanted to ask them for agenda planning. Okay. So the two things I have are we'll have recommendation number two about mayor's court yeah, for the exactly. comments we received, so we'll look at that again. And we'll have this draft citizen review board with comments to look at again. Justice is Right, then the commission, right, would also be... And we'll have a new draft from you? Okay. And working group reports that we get into the system? Correct, and then any of the reports? Okay. All right, any further others? This would be a time for other. All right, seeing none. Uh, Motion to adjourn. We already did it. Oh, we already did it. Motion to adjourn. I missed that. I second. <laughs> All right. Uh, meetings adjourned. Thank you very much. Great job. Good job.